All right, so this is an optional lesson, but some people might find it helpful to understand where the kinematic equations come from based off of where we started. So um, again, you don't need to know how to derive them. You're just going to apply them. But still, um, let's go through it. So remember, we talked about the average velocity being the displacement over the time and the average acceleration, uh, average acceleration being the change in the velocity over time, right? Now, we can write this as like, we'll just leave the, well, actually, for the displacement, we'll leave it alone because that's our kinematic variables. But for the change in velocity, um, we're going to write that as just the final minus the initial, final velocity minus the initial velocity over the time. Now, that's, that's what that change is. I'm not going to write the F there because that just denotes final velocity. And just for simplicity, I don't like to have too many subscripts. So without that, it's the final velocity. With the zero, it means it's initial velocity. And so what ends up happening is assuming the acceleration is constant, which is why the all the assuming the acceleration is constant what it means it's not changing. All right, that's what we mean by constant. Then these equations, there's a couple of things that will come out of here. So the average acceleration will just be a single value, and that will be v minus v zero over t. You can multiply by the time here equals v minus v0 and add the v0. So you get v0 plus at equals the final velocity. So that's our first equation. Again, super important that we make that assumption because if this is changing, then it's not necessarily true that, um, that, that the rearrangement is going to work this way. So it's assuming that the acceleration is constant there. The other thing is about the acceleration being constant is true is that the average velocity you can look at, and this requires calculus to fully prove out, but hopefully intuitively you understand, is v plus v0 divided by 2. You just average the starting velocity and the final velocity, and that would be your average velocity during that time interval. So that we can plug into there and get v plus v0 over 2 is equal to the displacement over time. And then you can move the time over here and then move, make this just 1 half. Dividing by 2 is like multiplying by 1 half. OK, times t is equal to the displacement. OK, so that's another kinematic equation. This one's not on the equation sheet, but it is one I recommend that you understand and know how to use. OK, now for the other ones, the other two kinematic equations we use, we're pretty much just going to do some substitution. We're going to plug v and we're going to get rid of v by plugging this into here. And you get 1 half. Instead of v, I make it v0 plus at times t is equal to the displacement. And so then you just distribute the, the distribute the, um, uh, distrib uh, sorry, I forgot, I left out, sorry, one more thing I left out there. The replace the v with v0 plus at, we still have another v0, okay? So all I did was replace the v with v0 plus at. Then this is gonna be, um, this is gonna be one half, let's combine the v0 and the v0, make it two v0 plus at times t. Now let's distribute the 1 half into there. And we get 1 half times 2 v0 is just v0. And then 1 half times at is 1 half at times t is equal to delta x. And then now let's distribute the t into both of those. So you get v0 t plus 1 half at squared equals delta x. All right, so that's our most common kinematic equation that you tend to use a lot. So that's where that comes from. And then the other one is to say, like, well, I want to take this equation and not have time in it. So for this equation, we're going to solve for t. So we're going to subtract the v0. So we get at is equal to v minus v0. The t is equal to v minus v0 over a. And then we're going to plug that into there. So you get 1 half v plus v0 times v minus v0 over a uh, equals the displacement. Now, um, you can bring the a over here if you want. And then we just want to FOIL this thing out, v plus v0 times v minus v0. If you FOIL that out, that's difference of squares. You're going to v times v, which is v squared, minus v times v0, plus v, v times v0, minus v0 squared. Those inner terms cancel. And so this is v squared minus v0 squared, which then you make this 1 over 2a times v squared minus v0 squared equals delta x. Multiply by the 2a, and then add the v0 squared. So you end up with this v squared equals v0 squared plus 2a delta x. OK, and so those are the four kinematic equations. We're just mostly going to use them. You don't need to derive them. But they all stem from the fact the derivation is based on the fact that the acceleration is constant. It is a fixed value. 
it's not changing. And so um, without that, like all the derivations uh, for it fall apart, right? It, this assumption is super, super critical, which is why we can only use the kinematic equations when the acceleration is constant. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it really helpful. If you'd like more support, maybe you need more multiple choice practice, maybe you just need more guidance and things like that, I have plenty of information on my website. If you look in the description below and go to www.bothellstemcoach.com, uh, I will explain all the ways I help students be successful in their AP classes.